Hi everybody and uh, welcome back to our channel. Today we've got a mid-century rocking chair and it's in a little bit of a state. Um, firstly, uh, the upholstery is just in pretty sad condition and we're going to have to um, sort that out. So upholstery needs to be, to be done. Here's the backrest. Again, uh, probably the same as the front rest not too good at all so it's going to have to be basically uh, reupholstered and resorted refreshed so over here we've got something that i'm not sure what that's for seat base um everything needs a bit of a tidy up the woodwork is in pretty sad state it needs to be sanded back and refreshed also the front of the rocking chair here and it is it's not that apparent but I'll show you on um, some other clips uh, it needs a little bit of work um, what happens over time is the glue dries out and the joinery shrinks and then everything seems to come adrift so I've got some problems with the armrests uh, that they, they need to be glued back in and all the rest of it I'm gonna take all the springs out uh, take all the springs off I'm going to sand back, I'm going to glue where appropriate and uh, just to make sure that it's going to work and hold together for another 60 years. Also some clown, and I don't know why they've done it, has put in some door stoppers at the end of these things and I've got no idea why they've done that. So basically these puppies are going to have to come off. Uh, we're going to refresh and revitalize and make this thing look like a million bucks. So uh, welcome to our uh, restoration and save the rocking chair. And that's what we're trying to do today. All right, cheers and enjoy. This back's not too bad at all, actually. Um, should be able to sort of manipulate those. Um, and they've all been strung out on hooks. So that makes it really easy. So away we go. Let's get the springs off the backs. I got the first one free. Vice grips. Sometimes very handy. You can see that? It's just a, a bit of a uh, lock on and rotate. Okay, so normally I would take these struts off and then tap all these out and glue them. But I can't get these out. Um, so I've elected to um, put a little bit of glue here, squeeze it all together and put a few, um, put a screw right through the middle there just to hold the whole thing and stop it from spreading. And I think that'll do the trick. So it's something that I'm a little bit hesitant to do, but I think in this case, it will work. So let's give it a go. What I'm doing at the moment is countersinking some holes. Normally I'd use an electric drill, but it's far too aggressive and it would chew through the wood fairly quickly. I'm using an old school brace and bit. The drill bit is an 8.5 millimeter drill, which I have a lot more control of. You can see here I'm using a socket set to drive the screws in. And uh, it's just a small one. I use this as a screwdriver. And you can see it there, it's got a square head there on the screw. That fits into this little adaptive piece that goes on there like that and bingo you got it so 
so it's just one way around not using a screwdriver. Now the tendency is to try this with an electric drill. Don't do it. Don't do it. Something like this is a lot more friendlier. I put some small metal braces in the back to give the back more strength. The last thing you want is joints coming apart. Okay, and the last thing I've got to do is <laughs> get these door stoppers off. You can see that it's working really well. So I've got this old brace and bit from my uncle years ago, and this is the head of a um, of a screwdriver. Right, so now for the next adventure, we have made the repairs, the woodwork necessary. Um, now we've just got to go through and and do the sanding and finishing. As usual, don't forget to wear a face mask. Uh, you don't want to be breathing in this, uh, uh, this sanding dust. It's certainly not good for the lungs. Okay folks, we're back at it again. Um, I've sanded this down once. I just need to sand it again with a with a uh, a finer grit sandpaper. So I'm using 120 uh, grain to, to sort of finish off. I could go a bit smoother if I wanted to. It's got a nice creamy look about it. So when you sand something back, you can see it's a nice sort of creamy look. And it looks the surface is starting to look really nice. You know you're just about there. I've still got some blotches of varnish. Uh, that I've got to get rid of, uh, but that shouldn't take too long at all. So, uh, hey, back to work. That's looking really good. Coverage. It dries very quick, so pay skittle runs off. Also, I've used a um, bit of air to clean this with, so I got all the dust off. So that's looking really good. You can see that's looking magnificent. All right, so let's get stuck in. I've used a resin product here. It's water-based, uh, an acrylic semi-gloss varnish. It's really, really good. It looks a bit funny going on, however. Certain uh, parts of the wood absorb water quickly, some don't. So the finish looks fairly blotchy until it dries. So it's a little disconcerting when you look at the finish just after if you've completed putting the varnish on because it's blotchy, but it, it does dry back and it looks really quite smooth and nice. So just something to look out for. It dries probably within about um, 15 to 20 minutes. Um, so it's really a lot different working with this than an oil varnish. I finished varnishing it and it's looking really nice. It certainly brought a lot of life back into this uh, particular old rocking chair. And I think now uh, we can carry on and uh, put some of the eyelets in uh, to support the, scr uh, the springs. Also what I'm going to do is um, I put the base springs back in as well, which is always a bit of a chore, but I've uh, done it before, so hopefully we'll do it again. So these are 30 millimeter eyelets, and uh, they will support the springs uh, around the back. Around the base, we don't have to worry about the eyelets at all. Okay, so let's give this a shot. I'm just gonna put my drill there. Very old school this is by the way. And it's a bit of a slow process, but and the glue and the and the drill's a little wonky, but it does work. Place 
this into that hole and it's plenty big enough where it won't go all the way through and this is this loop deal here so what I'll do is I'll line it up and slowly turn it till it grips right once I got a bit of a bite on it then I'll use this little bar here to turn it around and it's a slow process but an easy one There, the eyelets are all on and we're ready to go. We can put the springs on, but I'll put the springs on the back um, after I've done the springs on the front. And uh, yeah, it's looking really good so far. You can see here that the vice grips work really well. They enable you to grab the end of the, the hook of the spring bring it towards the loop and drop it and twist it in. Without the vice grips it would be absolutely hopeless. When I first started this I used to try and do it by hand and uh, very quickly realized that I couldn't manage it. So uh, hey, don't forget the vice grips, vice grips are absolutely brilliant. Right, so I've found another spring and I've got it sorted, I think. So there we have it. The seat base is now done. The seat bag is finito. So that's about as much as I can do until the upholstery is ready to go on. Um, and then uh, it'll be finished. It won't take too much longer. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what it's going to look like when it's finished. But so far it's looking magic. and. Uh, yeah, can't wait to finish it. The sewing is just one aspect of this project. The most important part is the planning and getting a good pattern is quite crucial. And what we've done is we've based the pattern on the old fabric and uh, that seems to have worked out reasonably well. So we've used a uh, some craft paper to form the pattern, to draft it out and then sketched it uh, quickly onto the material ready for cutting. The wadding was sewn around the foam of both the seat base and back. This ensured that the wadding wouldn't slip once it had been surrounded by upholstery. Also, both the seat back and base had slips made from sheeting. This enabled us to trial the patterns that had been formulated to make sure that they work. Once we had ensured that these patterns would work, we then knew that we could use the pattern to go across the upholstery and uh, we could then basically sew it all together. So forming a seat slip is a really good idea to ensure your pattern works before you go into all the other effort of sewing. Once the fabric is cut to the pattern, then it's taken off and then pinned together to allow easy sewing. The first thing we do is we get the zips lined up and then sew it in. And we use a sort of an invisible um, zip format uh, which is really nice, it gives a really good finish, it looks really sweet. After the zips are sewn, then the side panels are then sewn on. 
Now these are a little bit more challenging because they have rounded ends and uh, they take a little bit of skill and to, to manage. For those of you who are still novices, it's going to take a little time to perfect this art, but it just takes a lot of practice, a huge amount of patience, and sometimes you've just got to unpick what you do and start all over again. So, hey, it's a learning process. Be patient with yourself and give it time. Hey, you'll get there. Just keep practicing. So once the upholstery for the seat base has been completed, then you've got to put the squab inside the seat base itself. Now this is not as easy as it looks. It's quite a tight fit and you've got to push that of, of foam past the zip and push it into the corners of the upholstery to ensure that it fits right. So hey, we cracked it. We got the seat base done. Now it's just a matter of finishing the seat back. Now that's a bit of a different challenge. The upholstery for the seat back had some interesting challenges. It was slightly different to seat bases. There were some commonalities. We sewed on the side panels with the rounded ends, uh, but there were some differences. And the differences were, firstly, the zip was in the middle. Secondly, there was a, a flap which actually contained a spring to anchor the seat back to the, the back of the chair to stop the back from falling off. And thirdly, there was a concealing flap that went over the back of the spring and uh, to hide the uh, all the spring work from view and to make it more aesthetically pleasing. There was also a slight curvature on the seat back which had to be allowed for. So the seat back was a little bit more of a challenge to sew, but hey, we got there in the end and it looked really sweet. So hey, it's just a matter of making sure you've got your planning right, your pattern right, you've pinned everything and you've planned everything. The sewing, well that's just a bit of a formality. It takes time and a bit of practice but hey you can do it give it a try yourself right like any journey the most exciting part is to uh, put it all together and we've come to that stage now where we can put the furniture the upholstery on the furniture here we have the seat base uh, it's fairly simple in construction we've put a bit of felt in between the seat base and the springs just to help it to, uh, to, to, to weather the movement and to wear properly. We've also uh, created a channel top and bottom for where the springs go into and you can see it looks quite nice because we've used the original material on the, the four edge side and we've got a, some nice sort of seat base batting for the rear so it looks really nice and colourful. And I think this is really going to set it off. Not that you'll see it, but you will see this edge. So that's the first thing we've done. Seat base, right. So I'm going to put the spring through the hole. And you can see there, the springs come out the other side. This is what people are going to see. They're not going to see the seat base because there'll be a cushion on it. So what I'll do, and I think I can do this without the vice grips, is I'll just put that in there like that. So you can see that's now lined up. I've got to do the same thing with the back. This back spring holds everything steady, stops things from moving. Okay, so there we go. You can then see that uh, I'll put this onto the back like so. There we go. The seat base is now firmly on, it's not going anywhere, and away we go. Seat back's got two flaps, all right? Both need to go under the spring. Okay, so what I need to do is put this flap under the spring. That's first done. That's not looking too bad. Now this is the back cover which covers the whole thing, but we'll deal with that in a minute. This spring here, basically, goes through this hole, keeps everything steady, which we've created. We'll attach it. 
attach it to the side. You don't want to attach it to the side over here. Oh. A little bit tight, but it should be okay. There we go. So it's done. Smooth that out a bit. So it's sitting steady. Right. So over this side, we've got this little cover here. Now we're going to have to stitch, uh, staple this onto the base. So I'm going to get my stapler and we'll get that done. That'll hold everything nice and tight and uh, I'll make it look like a million bucks. Okay, so I've got this sta staple gun and uh, you certainly need one of these, so really handy. So I'm going to attach the back uh, or the, the seat back to the, uh, the back end here. All right, and slightly bit surely. You can see it's quite difficult because of the bend of the hose. The idea is not to staple your fingers. Right, you can see that's hanging together quite nicely. Now before I get too carried away, I just want to have a look and see what this looks like when I pick it up. See there, the back looks quite nice, doesn't it? Nice and flat. And I just want to get the squab. Let's put that on there, just have a bit of a look. It's not bad, is it? Yeah. Okay, so we're pretty sure that it looks alright now. So what I'll do is I'll finish off the stapling. Yeah. Not having to battle the cord now. Yeah. Well, some of it anyway. Okay, so that's it. We're pretty much done. I'm just going to do a little small bit of stitching here, just to make sure that that doesn't come adrift. That looks all right. Other than that, we, we are finished. So there we have La Finished Product, and it's looking really good. I tell you what, we rescued a rocking chair, and that's really exciting. We've helped save the planet. We've stopped this wood from going into the, into the garbage, and uh, I'm really pleased with it. Sounds good. All right, so don't forget, hit like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.